Academic stress is a recurring and continuous problem that many high schoolers and college students face. But what exactly is academic stress? As Frontiers in Public Health defines it, academic stress is a student's psychological state resulting from continuous social and self-imposed pressure in a school environment that depletes the student's psychological reserves. Academic stress affects most students, but especially high schoolers. It is usually caused by the pressure to maintain and have high grades in the competitive environments often found in schools. Students often feel the need to excel, resulting in unhealthy competition with their peers. They also frequently have an excessive workload, including extracurriculars, along with the possibility of having classes that are much faster than they can follow. All of these result in negative effects like high anxiety, stress, depression, and lack of sleep, which can last much longer than the regular academic school year. Academic stress is a complicated issue and almost impossible to solve completely. However, we can reduce the amount of academic stress students experience by getting students and schools to change their system and perspective. In a survey we conducted to find how academic stress affected local high school students, 101 students responded. Most students who responded to this survey, around 86%, admit to experiencing medium to high levels of stress on a daily basis. When prompted with the question, which of the following would you say causes you the most stress, 81.8% .8 of students answered grades and academics out of other options that were sports, personal life, and extracurriculars. Around 80% selected the pressure to have high grades, tests, and maintaining a life balance as their main stressors. In a survey conducted by Pew Research into pressures high schoolers experience out of other options including alcohol, drugs, performance in sports, etc., 61% of high school students reported feeling pressured to get good grades. There is a clear and distinct connection between grades, our current education system, and academic stress in high schoolers. Yet if that is the case, why do we continue to follow this so clearly flawed system? It is said that the first concepts of grades were developed by Yale. The Yale president, Ezra Stiles, was the first to implement them by making four terms, optimi, second optimi, inferiors, and prejores. This ranking system was then followed by a similar version of today's letter grade, which was divisions. Divisions were developed by Harvard, and they were broken up in divisions 1 through 6, much like our six-letter grades today, A through F. Grades were intended to measure a student's intellect and academic performance in school. They were designed to be an easy way for teachers to give instant and specific feedback to students, allowing them to understand where they stand and how to improve. The same goes with tests. They help solidify information and motivate students to study. In fact, most students confess that grades are a major motivating factor for them. When asked, how much do you think grades contribute to your motivation? 49% of students chose the highest option, admitting grades are fundamental to their motivation. Students say that without grades or tests, they would not feel as pressured to do well in school or even study their material. I think if schools didn't implement a grading system, it would be beneficial to my mental health because I would be less stressed and less worried about my grades. But I also feel like if they didn't implement the grading system, I wouldn't care as much as like studying or learning the subjects because it isn't graded. However, are grades a healthy form of motivation? Are they helpful forms of feedback? Do tests, specifically standardized tests, accurately measure students' knowledge? The biggest problem with grades is that they are an extrinsic form of motivation. The American Psychological Association, the APA, defines extrinsic motivation as an external incentive to engage in a specific activity, especially motivation arising from the expectation of a punishment or reward. In this case, the reward is a good grade and the punishment is a bad grade. As studies done by the APA show, rewards such as good grades enhance learning, but at the cost of intrinsic motivation, which the APA defines as an incentive to engage in a specific activity that derives from pleasure in the activity itself, other than because of any external benefits that might be obtained. And according to the Harvard Graduate School of Education, when students have intrinsic motives for learning, they become much more likely to attach meaning to their work, explore new topics, and persist in the face of learning challenges. While extrinsic motivation in an academic setting, as the National Library of Medicine shows, leads to burnout. Grades come at the cost of students' interest in the material itself. It forces students to think, I need to pass instead of, I need to learn. Their focus becomes earning the reward and avoiding the punishment, especially when the reward is the expectation. And as teachers have noticed, a bad grade or a few bad grades can actually hurt a student's motivation. You get like bad grade after bad grade after bad grade, it can demotivate you and be like, okay, well, like I'm not going to try because what's the point? I've been trying and this is what has been the result. Lead to burnout. It can also lead to uh, 
It can also lead to helplessness and the, the sense of like, why should I even try that kind of stuff? So. This I need to pass mindset where students have no true interest, no intrinsic motivation in the material, but feel the pressure to perform well results in them cramming instead of learning or even resorting to methods of cheating, such as copying others' assignments, plagiarizing, or cheating on tests. According to the International Center for Academic Integrity, in a survey of over 7,000 high school students from across the U.S., 95% of those students admitted to participating in some form of cheating. Essentially, grades divert the focus from learning the material to getting a good grade. Coming back to, are grades helpful forms of feedback? In the survey sent out to green level high school students, less than 20% thought grades were a helpful and resourceful form of feedback, leaving most of the student body who did not consider grades helpful. Teachers interviewed found that other sources of feedback offered in class were much more beneficial to students. One of the earliest studies into this link between feedback and academic performance conducted by psychologist Ellis Page tested three groups. One where they only received grades, another where they received grades with generic comments, and the third where the students received the grades in addition to specific instructional feedback with the teacher's opinion. This study found that the group with the specific feedback outperformed the other two groups, which goes to show that instead of grades, specific feedback is much more valuable to students, especially in regards to academic performance. And when questioning if tests accurately measure students' knowledge, around 43% of green level students definitively said that tests did not accurately assess their knowledge of a topic. Only 17% of students believe that tests did. Teachers say that tests do not always include the full picture and focus on one particular aspect of a student's knowledge. For the most part, a majority of teachers and students agree that tests are not the best way to accurately evaluate students. Sometimes time standardized tests like that become more a reflection of how good are you at test taking strategies rather than how much do you know. Even though grades and tests offer a quick method of feedback, they are a major cause of academic stress and anxiety in high school students. A teenager's mental health is especially important to maintain as they transition from a kid to an adult. During this transition, teenagers can experience many stressors, part-time jobs, extracurriculars, financial awareness, and possibly familial issues. All of these demands are weighed on the student in addition to academic stress. These demands and stressors, if they are not fixed, can increase the academic stress students face. If academic stress is not dealt with, it can cause various mental health issues like chronic stress and anxiety, depression, and academic burnout. As seen in an academic stress survey, 80.2% of students responded that because of academic stress, they are experiencing symptoms of anxiety. 70% felt that they were overwhelmed and helpless, and 62% felt that they were experiencing changes in their sleeping patterns. As academic stress increases, so do the symptoms of anxiety and in turn depression. Academic stress's most common and dangerous effect in the human body is, as the name suggests, stress. Though stress can be helpful to meet objectives and be an extra boost of energy to focus on demanding tasks, when a human mind is in a constant state of stress like academic stress, that stress can be harmful. In a TED Talk by TED Ed titled How Stress Affects Your Brain, it states, It also leads to fewer new brain cells being made in the hippocampus. This means chronic stress might make it harder for you to learn and remember things, and also set the stage for more serious mental problems like depression and eventually Alzheimer's disease. As the video states, if stress is continuously active in the brain, important parts of the brain, like the hippocampus, deteriorate. These parts of the brain are responsible for learning, memory, and stress control. If they deteriorate, that can be a huge problem since high schoolers' brains are still in development. It could contribute to problems later on in their lives, including mental and physical health problems like depression and Alzheimer's. But high levels of cortisol over long periods of time wreak havoc on your brain. For example, chronic stress increases the activity level and number of neural connections in the amygdala, your brain's fear center. And as levels of cortisol rise, electric signals in your hippocampus, the part of the brain associated with learning, memories, and stress control, deteriorate. It's not just stress that can cause issues with a student's health later on in life. Academic stress is also impacts sleep. The right amount of sleep is important for everybody to get. It promotes healthy habits, performance, and mood, especially for high schoolers as they need a well-performing brain to function and learn properly in school. 
Without the proper amount of sleep or lack of a good sleep schedule, like 62% of students in the survey experience, problems can occur. In fact, according to the CDC, 7 out of 10 high schoolers do not get enough sleep on school nights. And just like with stress, if a person has unhealthy sleep habits, chronic health conditions can start to develop. Conditions like heart disease, cancers, heart failure, and Alzheimer's disease are just some of the ailments that can be caused from continuous lack of sleep. In conclusion, grades are not an effective method of feedback and create a competitive environment. Instead of prioritizing grades, the education system should focus on individual progress and passions. Although grades can be a form of motivation, they are not a healthy form and it often results in students experiencing effects of their prolonged academic stress, such as anxiety and sleep issues. So what can we do to help reduce the amount of academic stress students face? An example of a country that has reworked its education system for the better is Finland. They have a graduation rate of 99%, 16% more than the U.S. They rank as one of the highest countries, much higher than the U.S., on the Program for International Student Assessment, the PISA, an internationally administered test to 15-year-olds that evaluates education systems. So what is the difference between the American education system and the Finnish education system? Finland does not have any standardized tests until the completion of the nine years of compulsory education. According to the Association for Childhood Education International, because Finland does not emphasize standardized testing, there is no competition among schools, and thus no unnecessary stress on students and teachers. The low level of accountability and testing allows teachers to guide students to discover their own way of accomplishing curricular goals without fear. For most students, this type of environment encourages creativity and excellence. They spend less time in school, five hours a day, and school starts around 9 to 9.45 a.m. for Finnish students. Finnish students also are not expected to spend much time after school working on homework. Instead of hours on homework, they only spend around 30 minutes of homework after school. Feedback is given via narrative form, emphasizing descriptions of their learning progress and areas for growth. We can learn a lot from the Finland school model, who spend less time in school and perform much better than Americans. To start, while it would be hard to entirely remove grades, focusing on specific instructional feedback instead would benefit academic performance much more. We should also focus on mastery, if a student mastered the content or not, over ranking a student's knowledge. Removing unnecessary standardized tests will also allow teachers and students to focus on learning over passing a test. Both of these will also reduce competition. Encouraging autonomy, a self-paced system, will reduce the workload for both teachers and students. Encourage intrinsic motivation and allow students to spend less time working on homework and even start school a little bit later. By implementing any of these changes, we will be focusing less on competition and grades, creating a school system that supports a balanced life, students' progress in learning, and values students' health more all of which will reduce the academic stress students experience.